Hello and welcome again. So on this video I'm going to continue working on the rest of the material for this animation. But before I do so I want to take a look on how the entire composition looks like. So as I'm previewing it I find that it goes a bit too fast. So I think I'm going to modify the timing for this entire animation. So in order to do so I'm going to select the tall mag layer and I'm going to go to the far right part of the layer, to the extreme right of the layer. If you can't see it, maybe you should zoom out on your timeline. So since the tall mag animation is only 65 frames long, I'm going to shrink this entire layer down to 65 frames. So I'm going to go over the extreme here and I'm going to click and drag until I reach frame number 65. So I think this animation is going too fast and I want to stretch the timing for this just a little bit. So now that I have fine tuned the duration for that tall mag layer, I'm going to select it and right click on it. Then go to time and time stretch. So this window prompt will appear and as you can see you have different options. You can either enter a new percentage or enter a new duration, which I'm going to do. I'm going to enter 100 frames and this will always be 30 frames per second. So don't worry about that. You won't see the frame rate drop. So always be sure that you keep your original frame rate here. So now I'm going to click OK. So now as you can see, the animation now lasts 100 frames. So let's preview it. OK, I think it works better now. So if an animation goes too fast, you can't really appreciate it. So I think that 100 frames does the trick. You can appreciate everything that's going on the screen. So I'll have that in mind for the next elements that I'm going to animate. And I could even stretch the duration of the bottom line. OK. So now I'm going to collapse everything and I'm going to continue with the next element, which is the coffee pot. I'm going to unhide it and double click on it. And now I'm going to enter this composition. I'm going to double click on the coffee pot composition. So as you can see, once that I enter the composition, I can see all the layers that compose this single element. So I'm going to start by hiding some things. So I'm going to start by animating the lines as I did before and then I'm going to continue with the rest of the shapes. So by using the shy switch I'm going to hide every layer that does not contain a line. Ok, so everything is done and I'm going to start animating this from the bottom up. So this is the main layer for the bottom shape. And these other layers are the extra lines that we have over here. So we're going to start with the biggest shape, with the biggest line, which is this one, the main shape. So I'll click on this arrow to unfold it. Go to add trim pads. And I'm going to pick up the speed here because you know already how to do this. So I'm going to go a bit faster this time. I'm going to take the top bar, which is the time navigator, and zoom in so we can see from 0 to 100 because I want to make this animation 100 frames long too. So I'm going to stand here on frame number 20 and add keyframes for start and end and I'm going to move to the first keyframe and enter 50 and 50. So both values for start and end will be 50. So again the lines are not starting on the exact middle. So again we're going to modify the offset value a little bit, move it around here if I zoom in you'll be able to see the detail, so I'm going to leave it about here. Ok, so there we go. And this is starting from the bottom and going up. So there we have it. Around here I want to start animating the other lines. So I'm going to unfold this and go to add trim pads, unfold and I'm going to place the first keyframes here. And the last ones will be on frame number 20. So again I'm going to the previous keyframe and I'll enter 0 on both values. 
because I want them to start on the bottom, right here. So let's see if that's correct. Okay, it looks like zero was actually the top part. So we're going to change it, no problem. I'm going to enter 100 on both values and there we go. Okay, so far so good. Now I want to take care of this other line, which is the one on the right. So I'm going to add trim pads, unfold, and I'm going to guide myself using these other keyframes that we have here. So I can enter the same frames here. And again here I'm going to enter 100 on both, start and end. So as you can see, this one is the inverse. It's not always obvious which end is zero and which end is 100. But I actually like how this looks, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I like the idea that this line is going on a different direction. So now let's take care of the line on the middle. I'm going to unfold, add, trim pads. Now I'm going to the first keyframe, which will be frame number five. Then on frame number 20, I'm going to create the other keyframes. And this time I'm going to enter 50 and 50 because I want this line to start from the middle outwards. So all three lines have a different animation. So this is looking quite good. I think that this adds some interest to this part of the animation. Okay. At this moment, I'm going to click here on toggle transparency grid so I can see better on the preview and you'll be able to see better too as well. And I'm going to stand on frame number 15 and press end so I can set the end of the work area so it starts looping there. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to move to this middle shape so I'm going to collapse everything so far. All the lines on the bottom are done so let's move to the middle part. We're going of course to add trim pads and we're going to start roughly on frame number 20. And the last keyframe will be on frame number 30. This is a very short line, so I don't want this animation to take too long. So again, I'm going to go with 50 and 50. And of course, the final keyframes will remain as they are. Okay. So I'm going to hide the shapes that are on top so I can see how this looks like. Okay. So maybe I'll play with the offset values a bit. So I like this better. I like the fact that the lines are going from bottom to top and they shine at the center. But of course, this is a matter of personal taste. This is what I personally like, but feel free to do it differently. So this one is done. Let's collapse it. Then unhide the layers that I've just hidden. And we're going to take care of the main shape at the top, which is this one here. Unfold, add, trim pads. And I want these lines to appear over here, where these other lines connects with this shape. So at this precise moment, I want this animation to start. So of course, I'm going to add the keyframes for the starting point of the animation there. So this animation should last longer, should last from frame number 25 to frame number 40. Since this is a big shape, I want this movement to be a bit slower. So I'll enter 50 and 50 for the first keyframe. And the last one will remain as it is. I'm going to hide everything else so far. I'm going to hide these lines and this spout. And let's see how this looks like. It looks quite good, but I think I'm going to move every keyframe a bit to the left. Okay, about there will do. So feel free to fine tune the timing for the animation to your personal taste. Now it's time to take care of the lines which are on the top part of this coffee pot. I think I want this center line to appear when these two lines connect, which is frame number 38. 
So I'm going to select that layer, unfold, add trim paths. Then I'm going to add the keyframes for start and end and make this line animation about 10 frames long. So I think this should go from top to bottom. So I'll enter 100% on both values and now it's going the opposite way. I'll have to change it to zero and zero for both values. And there we go. I think I may move this a bit to the left. Okay, this is what I had in mind. And the other ones should move at the same time using the same frames, but I want them to go from bottom to top. So I'm going to add the keyframes on the same frames I used before. And for these ones, I'm going to enter 100% on both values for the first keyframe. So these are these layers that we have down here, line top two and line top four. So of course, these are only the names that I gave to my layers. Yours may be different. Even the entire illustration may be different. But the important thing is that you get the basic idea behind how this animation works. Okay, we have completed the lines for almost everything now. So let's start collapsing each layer that we have already modified. And we have this little shape over here and we're going to take care of this. I want this animation to start about here where this main shape connects with this part, which is on frame number 31. So I'm going to add trim paths, start here and end, let's say on frame number 40. I'm going to make it go from zero to 100 and see how this goes. I think I'm going to go with 100 on both. And I'm going to modify the timing a little bit. Okay, there we go. It's looking quite good at the moment, so let's take care of these lines at the top. These layers are called top handle and the other one is called line lid. So let's begin with this one. So I'm going to add the trim pads and I want the lid to appear, let's say about here where these lines connects here. And I'm going to make it last from frame number 34 to frame number 50. And I'm going to enter 50% each as I want this to start from the center. And now I'm going to play with the offset value a bit. So this starts at the very center. So I'm modifying the timing so this appears sooner and everything connects with everything. So each line is connected. Okay. So I only need to work now on the two lines concerning the top handle of this coffee pot, which is this little shape that we have here at the very top of the element. So let's take care of the handle. We're going to choose the keyframe where it starts. I think it should be around here, then add trim pads. For this one, I think I'll enter zero on start and end. Okay, I'm liking the animation so far. I like how everything is connecting. It's just what I had in mind. Okay. Finally, we are going to take care of these two shapes very quickly. This is going to start around here on frame number 47. Then I'm going to add trim pads and I'm going to make it very short. I'm going to enter 50 and 50 for the first values and the top part 
should start around here approximately. and last about 10 frames long. Let's preview it. Ok, we are done with all the lines now. So now we are going to deactivate this shy switch, then click on the shy icon for all the lines layers and unclick the shy guy for everything else. So I'll activate the main shy switch again and we'll only see the layers that contain fills and not lines. So this time is the other way around. Ok, so let's start with the bottom. We're going to draw a big rectangle and be sure to click Tool Creates Mask beforehand. Now we're going to add the first keyframe for the mask on frame number 6 under Mask Path. And the last keyframe for this animation should be on frame number 20. Now on the first keyframe I'm going to move the mask down, so it looks like this shape appears from bottom to top. Now let's take care of the layer for the shadow, this shadow bottom layer. This should appear with an opacity effect as well. So I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to bring the opacity. So this should start around here when the mask animation is done. Then I'll enter the last keyframe and the first one should have opacity 0%. So let's preview this. Now let's take care of the middle part for this coffee pot. Let's draw a big rectangle that acts like a mask. Then unfold this mask over here. And this time I'm going to go with the mask expansion option. I'm going to make it last very few frames. Now I'll modify the first keyframe for mask expansion. I'm going to click and drag to the left to create a negative number. So it looks like the mask is appearing out of nowhere. And of course the shadow for the middle part will appear with a transparency effect, which I'm going to do very quickly now. Ok, there we go. Now let's take care of the top part. So I'm going to locate the main layer for this top part, which is this one called top outlines. So I'm going to take a rectangle to create a mask, click on tool creates mask. Then click and drag here to create the mask. So I'm going to add the first keyframe on frame number 30. I'm going to add it under mask path and the last one should be on frame number 40. Then I'm going to modify the position so it's down. And now let's preview the animation. Ok, it's looking quite good. It lags behind the line a little bit, but I think that it looks interesting and I like it, so I think I'm going to keep it that way. And now, as usual, I'm going to take care of the shadow part, which I'm going to do the exact same way as I always do it. I'm going to make it last from 40 to 50 and then I'm going to modify the opacity and there we go. And I think I want to do something different for the spout shape right here. I want to first draw a rectangle and use it as a mask. And I want it to start around here. And end here. But I'm going to move the mask to the right. So this mask will appear from the right to the left. And now we're going to take care of the handle, which is here. I'm going to draw a rectangle and of course I'm going to click on Tool Creates Mask. Go to Mask Path and add a keyframe and another keyframe on frame number 50. 
and this one I'm going to move it upwards. I want it to appear from top to bottom. Okay, so this is how it looks like so far. There we go, that's perfect. So the top part is all that's left. So I'm going to select that layer called lid. Now I'll select the rectangle tool, go to tool creates mask and draw a big rectangle. Then unfold masks and under mask path, I'm going to add the keyframes and I'm going to move the mask down on the first keyframe of the animation. So this is how this animation will look like. And as usual, the shadow will appear as a transparency with a fade in. So on the same frame where the animation for the mask ends, I'm going to bring the opacity and enter the first keyframe and we do our thing. So I know that this video is getting a bit repetitive and it's a bit annoying to have to repeat the same thing over and over, but it's a good thing because you'll get to practice it and know it by heart. So this is the top handle shape, which is the only shape left. So we're going to create a rectangle and click on tool creates mask. So as you can see, I'm following the same steps that I followed for the rest of the shapes. So it's very easy to create an animation like that. This was a rather large shape, the coffee pot, but it's actually easy to animate. Now I'm going to go to frame number 75 and hit N as in Nancy on the keyboard to mark the end of the work area. So now it's time to preview this animation on the coffee set composition with the other elements. Okay, so far so good. Okay, there we go. It's looking good at the moment and this is our animation so far. We're going to leave it as it is and continue with the next element on the next video.